Okay, thank you, Ron, and, and thanks everyone for logging in and uh, spending some of your time listening to me. I hope to make it worth your while. Um, the, the subject of uh, today's uh, uh, seminar is going to be, you know, uh, hints and tips for foundational data for your CMMS. And um, the, the agenda that I'd like to follow um, is pretty straightforward. First of all, um, the, the business case for data integrity, uh, which um, is, is kind of a, a bunch of statistics that I gathered in writing the book, particularly for the first chapter try to set the stage for why, why is it important to be worried about this. And then I want to talk about foundational data specifically for our CMMS. What is it and, and how does it link to, uh, to the business really. Um, uh, also, I'm going to try to get, go through some uh, hints and tips and examples of what good data looks like, what bad data looks like. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, as well toward the end. Um, different approaches for uh, making sure that our data does have integrity, uh, either if you're starting out with poor data or you're getting ready to implement a new system, you know, what are the different ways of doing that? Can you do it as you go? Can, should you do it as a big bang all up front? And what are the advantages and disadvantages? And what are the basic steps of, of having a good sound foundational data building project? So. And not only just a project, uh, but also on an ongoing basis, maintaining the, the, the data integrity as well. So that's our agenda. And um, without further ado, let's move into uh, a definition, really, of asset data integrity. Um, asset data integrity, the way I'm defining it, is a collection of points or facts about an asset or a set of assets that can be combined to provide relevant information to those who require it in a form that is entire, complete, and trustworthy. So I, I think uh, most people know intuitively what we mean by data integrity, particularly as it relates to our physical assets. But I thought it would be helpful to put a specific definition on the, uh, on the screen to get us started. Um, the, let's see, I want to make sure that my, OK, my keys are working. The business case for data integrity um, is, is, base, is, is kind of an attempt for, to, to put the importance of data in the context of business. And um, there, there, are, there are lots of different potential problems or categories of problems with data. Um, I've got three primary ones here. Problem number one um, is too much data. And there's some interesting statistics here that I've been able to gather. Um, it's, it's interesting to me that the average installed data storage capacity at large corporations um, in the period ended about a year ago grew by 198 terabytes in less than two years and was actually doubling in size every 10 months. That, that's dramatic. That's pretty amazing to me. But just to say that again, the, the, the amount of storage capacity that's necessary to house our data in typical large companies is doubling every 10 months. So we have huge quantities of data, and I think everybody knows that, and we're accumulating a lot more data every single day. Problem number two, as I look at it, is, is what I call duplicated data. And lots of uh, studies and articles uh, um, have uh, cited the uh, the problem with having multiple sources of information, particularly the same data, uh, housed in different systems and not always agreeing with each other. So the vast duplication of data because uh, information is housed in various different applications, repositories, data warehouses, and so on, uh, particularly when you look across the organization, across the enterprise, as opposed to in one single plant. Uh, that's a fairly dramatic um, number of sources of information. And uh, again, they don't always agree with each other. Um, Andy Bitter of Gartner looks at this regularly and writes about it all the time. And, and he's uh, written many articles that talk about the many sources of data that are causing problems for companies, 200 data sources uh, on average for most companies. And, and um, others, as you can see, some of the, some of the additional quotes here uh, talk about you know too much data. Um, it, it's uh, it's causing a lot of inefficiencies for us. Even though we like the idea that we're collecting more and more data, is, is it really providing more information? 
the third problem category for me is for quality data. And most people, when, when you ask them about data integrity, jump right to the quality. You know, is it complete? Is it accurate? And of course, that is a big portion of what, what we talk about in data integrity. But it's only one aspect of it. But it's a big one, as we said. And once again, with m many sources of information, um, not all being maintained diligently, uh, up to date with changes that may be occurring in our facilities, um, the, the quality of the data, the completeness of it, the accuracy of it, the consistency of its format, and the uh, whether or not it agrees with the same information in different systems, that, that turns out to be a pretty big problem in, in most companies. Um, what does that really mean from a business perspective? Well, I think it, it re really means lots of wasted time. I mean, because we have lots of data, tons of it, it, it takes time to cull through all of it to get to the information that we're looking for. Um, Accenture did a study uh, which uh, was the subject of an article in Information Week uh, in January of 2007, in which 109 managers, you can see here from the footnote, of um, middle-level managers of companies in the United States and the United Kingdom that were $500 million or larger uh, were surveyed. And they discovered and published a study that said that, on average, those middle-level managers were spending two hours per day looking for data, uh, looking for information. And uh, I kind of took that study and tried to extrapolate it into you know, financial terms. Uh, it turns out that the Department of Labor in the United States, um, particularly the Bureau of Labor Statistics, keeps track of a lot of information about workers. Uh, we had 142 million workers in the United States workforce in 2006. And I'm assuming that about 10% of those people are middle-level managers, which would mean about 14 million of the employees in the United States workforce are middle-level managers that are falling into this category that Accenture studied. If we assume that only 25% of the wasted or the time spent looking for data of two hours is wasted because of poor data that can be fixed, so this to me is fairly conservative. In other words, only a half hour of that wasted time is solved with better data. That turns out to be 1.63 billion hours per year. And translating that into man years, it's 785,000 man years wasted annually just in the United States. At $40 per hour for a middle-level manager of fully loaded costs, that equates to $65 billion. Now, and if all the U.S. companies were one entity, $65 billion is a lot of money. Um, that is, is solvable with, with um, data integrity. I'm um, going to move to the next slide. To try to put that 785,000 man years into some context that makes it interesting, uh, I, I looked at that in terms of the retiring baby boomers. Um, the baby boom generation uh, represents 22.8 million workers in the United States workforce. This is, again, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics at the U.S. Department of Labor. So we have 22 or 23 million workers that are aged 55 or higher in our workforce. That's about 16 percent of the entire workforce. But if they all retired evenly over the next 10 years, then about 2.3 million workers will retire each year over the next 10 years in the baby boom generation. And my contention is that if we can solve the data integrity problem, or even only part of the data integrity problem, freeing up, you know, conservatively speaking, that 785,000 person years each year that is wasted because of data problems, then we, in essence, have solved one-third of the retiring baby boom problem, that is one-third of those 2.3 million baby boomers who are going to retire every year, in essence, wouldn't have to be replaced. Or they can be repurposed if they were replaced to more value-added activities. So that's about one-third of the retiring baby boom issue that we're dealing with. And that's only looking at the middle-level managers in the U.S. workforce alone. So it's, it's big. But try to bring it down closer to home. 
for this audience, I think um, let's look at, at maintenance workers specifically. There are a lot of studies, including ones that my company has conducted over the last 20 years, that consistently indicate between 30 and 45 minutes per day per maintenance worker is wasted looking for spare parts uh, because of poor data in the inventory catalogs. Um, in many cases, making conclusions that the part is not here when it really is, ordering it and having it flown in, all the, all the famous stories that many of you, I'm sure, have experienced. Uh, there's lots of, lots of data that, that supports you know, a, a considerable amount of the time of a typical maintenance worker is wasted every day because of poor quality data in the inventory catalog alone. Now, I went back to the U.S. Department of Labor and found that um, we have 5.45 million industrial maintenance workers in the United States. And the data also suggests that the average wage is about $26 per hour. So if we assume conservatively that 30 minutes of that 30 to 45 minutes per day that's wasted can be fixed, that's, that's 627 million hours a year. <laughs> it's, it's, it's mind-boggling. It's, it's really incredible to me. When I started running these numbers out, I was really surprised, to, to be perfectly honest about it. Um, those hours equate to 300,000 workers, and the cost of those people at $26 per hour is $16 billion. So, you know, those 300,000 workers, that's 13% of the retiring baby boom generation. If you add that to the 33% from the previous slide, we're up to almost half of the retiring baby boom generation who is going to retire that we might not have to replace if we can only fix our data integrity problem.